Now, for many years, Spurs supporters have faced anti-Semitic abuse from rival fans, and in response, a large section of Tottenham fans have used the Y word to describe themselves, reclaiming it uh, in an attempt to reclaim the word. So, comedian David Baddiel, for instance, has campaigned for Spurs, Spurs supporters not to use the word for a number of years. And a survey of Tottenham fans found the overwhelming majority feel uncomfortable with its use. In a statement, Spurs said they believe it is time to move on from associating the term with the club. So to, to, to discuss this issue, I have with me Tottenham fan Mark Trainis in the studio, and I'm also joined by Stephen Pollard, who is the editor-at-large of the Jewish Chronicle, and he's also a Tottenham supporter. Thank you both. So, Mark, I'm going to come to you first. Now, um, you're a fan, you're a Tottenham fan. Um, now, the reason why I want to come to you first is because I'm interested. I know that a lot of fans from the club who are Jewish like to use the word to describe themselves. As I said in the intro there, they like to reclaim the word. So do you think they're right to have that attitude? I, uh, I'm a Jew. I've been a season ticket holder at Tottenham for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. I don't chant the word myself, but I'm not offended by it. And I do understand the use of it in the context of the fans. Yes. I also understand the club's standpoint on this. In, we're in 2022 and, yeah. and it... it it's time we moved on. I'm a little on the fence on this, to be honest. Well, so, for instance, like the way that gay, gay people reclaim the word queer, and when, when a gay person says that word, it has a completely different connotation than when a straight person might say it, potentially. So do you understand that maybe part of the concern is, well, there'll be non-Jewish people doing the same chants, right? Correct. Absolutely Does that trouble correct. you at all? It doesn't. I've got to be honest. It really doesn't. And, I mean, I go to football with, with my two children. Well, they're not children. They're 18 and 19 now. They, uh, they've both had formal Jewish education, primary school, secondary school, and they both chant the word. I don't get offended by it. I don't join in with the chant. It's, it's really as simple as that. OK, Stephen Pollard, if I could bring you in uh, on this issue. Um, where do you stand on this? Because mm. Mark's just been explaining that he doesn't feel that it's particularly offensive and that he feels yes. that it's about a matter of personal choice. Do you, do you see yeah. the, uh, the merit in that point of view? I've changed my mind in the last uh, three or four years. I used to be uh, very firmly in the camp that chanted it proudly um, for all the reasons that you've outlined. Uh, I was very clear about that. And my view was if other people um, have a problem with it, it's their problem, not mine. But I've changed my mind. Um, the fact is that we can't exist as Spurs fans in a bubble. Uh, you know, if things, if, if, if you were just talking about the relationship between the Spurs fans chanting the Y word and those at whom it's chanted, um, I'd have no problem with it whatsoever. But the problem is anti-Semitism in society in the last few years has been rising, at, you know, incredibly alarming rates. And anti-Semitism in football on the terraces is also rising. Um, and it's making it, the evidence is overwhelming that by us using that word, it's making it more difficult for other clubs to deal with the problem. Chelsea, for instance, which is actually, it's probably amongst all the Premier League clubs doing the best work in terms of trying to tackle anti-Semitism amongst its own fans, uh, still has a terrible problem where, you know, Spurs fans go and, the, and, and some of the Chelsea fans, it's to echo the sound of the gas chambers and so on. Um, and by us using that word, it allows them, it sort of gives license to those people. And I think we can't exist in a vacuum. The fact is, you know, only, only last week, anti the anti-Semitism figures published by the Community Security Trust showed them at record levels. It's not Spurs fans' fault. It's not the fault of us for using the Y word. But I think, you know, we can't pretend that we're the only people around whom this debate is, is focused, as it were. So the problem here is all about context, really. Is you're kind of implicitly acknowledging that a lot of the people who use the word are not being anti-Semitic when they use the word. Yeah. But your fear is that it can be used in that way. Have I got that right? Yeah, absolutely right. They're not being anti-Semitic. I mean, I was doing it myself. Um, and in fact, it was a kind of, it was, I felt it as an almost, you know, uh, it's a welcoming uh, use of the word. You know, the fact one, some people have said in the debate in the last few days that, you know, the problem is that it was a lot of non-Jews saying it at Spurs. To me, that was the point. Um, it was all the better that there were non-Jews chanting that word uh, at the same time. And, you know, they weren't chanting it anti-Semitically and it wasn't being received anti-Semitically by the players or by people at whom it was chanted. So it's not that it was being used in Spurs, uh, the context of Spurs anti-Semitically, but outside the Spurs ground, 
there's almost no other context in which that word is used other than anti-Semitically. There are, you know, I've, I've, as a, as a Jew, I've been, I've walked down the streets and had people yell, oi, the Y word at me. Um, and they don't mean it in a welcoming way. They mean it in terms of, in an entirely anti-Semitic way. Um, and, you know, the fact is that by us pretending at, 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 at Spurs, that it's all cuddly and nice. Actually, it's not, and it has an impact beyond the beyond the uh, the, the Spurs Stadium. Can I can I bring you in here, Mark? Um, what do you make of Stephen's point of view there? That actually, it's a it's the kind of word that cannot really be controlled. It's all very well saying that. Well, when you use it, you're obviously not being anti-Semitic. When other fans who may not even be Jewish use it, they may not be being anti-Semitic. But there is a significant contingent of people who are and will use this as a kind of disguise, I suppose? Stephen makes a very good point, and, and I'm not going to disagree with, with, with the point he made. The issue I have is, if all the Spurs fans stop chanting that word, is it going to stop the anti-Semitic abuse that Spurs fans generally get mm. from fans of other clubs? As Stephen mentioned, Chelsea, West Ham have been just as bad. I've, I've had... I've been to probably over 2,000 games, mm -hmm. home and away... For many, many years, we've had things, hurl, abuse hurled at us. They wouldn't know that I was Jewish, but the abuse is hurled at Spurs fans right. because of the use of the Y word. So I do get that that aspect, if you stop using it, and, and etc. But it, as I said, is that abuse going to stop? Well, this is an interesting question because I know literally nothing about football. I've been to one football match and it wasn't a particularly good one and I didn't really understand what was going on. So, um, but from what I understand, I, there was a lot of shouting, though, and there was a lot of stuff that I think as an outsider I would interpret as being aggressive, but I was assured it wasn't, that actually part of the culture of football on the terraces is, is to give the impression of being, of saying sometimes the most vicious things, but it's all theatre. Is that just an excuse or is that...? It's tribal. It's, it, it's the best word to describe it. It's, it's tribal. It's always been tribal. But is that and authentic or is it a performative form of tribalism? Do you prob think they probably really the latter. It? Probably the latter. I don't think they... Th there may be a handful with, with every fan group or, yes. or, or fan base. There's always going to be a handful. You can have 60,000 fans in a stadium and we've had a few incidences recently of bottles and lighters and other things being thrown at players. Yes. That's not everyone. That's one or two mindless individuals yes. running on the pitch not everyone does it so so i think to a certain extent you 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 have to again you, you look at context and you look at do they mean it in, in an aggressive manner probably not 99 percent of them don't there are those that probably do well let's bring Stephen in on that uh, Stephen, do, do you think that mm. what uh, mark is saying here is accurate that actually even if you were to have a blanket ban on the term firstly would that be effective uh, and secondly, yeah. um, would that stop anti-Semitic abuse? No, it w of course it wouldn't stop anti-Semitic abuse. That's not the point. The point is that by doing it, we're almost preventing anti-Semitic abuse being stopped. So of itself, it won't stop the anti-Semitic abuse. We're trying to get to, to we're trying to make it as um, unacceptable as possible. And let me give you a quick thought experiment to, to sort of make the point. Imagine there was a club, a notional club who, for the same reasons that Spurs fans had adopted the Y word, had adopted the N word, and that their fans chanted the N word in an entirely you know, welcoming and pleasant way. It wasn't meant in a racist way. Um, the thing is, you can't imagine that, can you? It's inconceivable that such a thing would happen, that there would be a club that was known to chant the N word. Um, and we need to get to a place where the Y word is regarded um, as being as toxic as it were as the N word, because in almost every circumstance, that's how it's meant. The, you know, you, you, we're having this debate about the use of it by Spurs fans because it's such a it's such an exceptional circumstance but would, but that it's you, actually not meant anti-Semitically. 